Are you under pressure at education? Pressure? Yeah. I'm excited. There's mm. no pressure on me. Mm. I survived in the white man's world mm -hmm. where I was literally swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. I'm in Ghana. I'm swimming downstream. Minister for Education with the support of the president. I'm excited. I'm not under any pressure. Is free whatsoever. SHS under pressure? No. Free SHS is getting better by the day. Why do we always hear stories of something not delivered, food here? Um, that's and, and, and that is why I love coming onto your show, mm -hmm. to show Ghana, where we are heading in education. I spend 20% of my time dealing with issues, current issues, mm -hmm. but 80% of my time looking at transformation issues, mm -hmm. things that will transform the fortunes of education so that it can fulfill the role it has been, uh, that has been uh, set uh, by the president. Mm -hmm. that education become the most important uh, agent for transformation. Last, uh, this past Sunday I was in Kumasi. I attended the send of uh, service for Prophet, uh, Prophet Hameni Ampong, mm -hmm. one of the foremost leaders in Church of Pentecost. Yeah. After church service, I got into my car, a young lady comes waving, rolled out the window, and said, I want to thank you for your service to Ghana. I'm so happy uh, for what you are doing for this country. And I want to give you a gift. Oh. Handed me an envelope, right? And I, I was curious. This, I'm a student of TEPA, a senior high school. My name is Matthew J. I opened the envelope, 10 CDs was in it. He said, 10 Ghana CDs. 10 Ghana CDs. And said, I want to give this as a token of my appreciation for the work that you do for Ghana. I was so touched. I ended up giving her 300 CDs. Oh, wow. But the idea that this young lady, a senior high school student, will come to me and say, get 10 CDs for your hard work. Mm. And I appreciate you so much. It's so heartwarming. It is. It, it's what makes me love what I'm doing, that the ordinary Ghanaian accosts me on the street and thank me for my service to my... I never entered politics thinking that I'll meet people on the street who appreciate me for the work I do. I thought politics was a, a, a thankless job. Mm. But I'm in a situation where people are thanking me. My well, how can you convince us that we are in 2022, mm. that free SHS of 2018 mm. or 19 mm. is either the same as it is today or today is better? I'll tell you why it is better. Mm -hmm. It is better because of the interventions that the president has given us the opportunity to bring about. Mm -hmm. The 2017 uh, Free Senior High School, yes, it started out Free Senior High School. At that point, we were not looking at how do we make uh, the education of high school students relevant. You know, Tony Blair just wrote a piece uh, talking about uh, the fact that the British education system is not fit for the 21st century. But before Tony Blair wrote this piece, we've been talking about um, the 21st century education. We've been talking about the fourth industrial revolution and why we need to tweak, change, transform our high school curriculum uh, to ensure that we can meet the goals of the 21st century. So if you look at what we are doing now, if you look at the STEM students that are coming up, this addition to the free senior high school intervention. Now we are creating a better opportunity for young men and women to go to high school and get quality education that they could not get in 2017. High school, so explain that to us. Uh, well, uh, explaining means we have uh, STEM high schools under construction in this country. What is that, STEM high schools? Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You see, in the 21st century, it's no longer the issue of just going to school. What you study was you are in school is so critical. Mm -hmm. You know, we have always trumpeted in this country the idea of uh, getting 60% of our students to do STEM or science-related courses at the university, and 40% doing humanities. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the data, I think we were probably kidding around, because how do you get 60% to do um, science or STEM-related courses at the university, when at the high school only 12.5% are doing science? Mm -hmm. And especially in a country where if you do not do science... So these STEM schools you are building, mm. are you attaching it to Wesley Girls, Presex, or Kopoko? Or, or, what, what, what is it? Are you there more schools you're adding? You see, new schools have been built, mm -hmm. have been built. But one of the things that we also have to understand that in this country, uh, after 50 years, a school may not be performing better. Mm -hmm. We have 
only 54 high performing schools in Ghana. Secondary schools. Secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Now with the TVET added, it's about 1,000 plus senior high schools. Okay, so they put something on the screen. What's this? Can you walk us through this? Yes. This is Bosomtri Girls. It's a, it's a it's senior a STEM, high, yeah. it's a STEM it's a, school. A STEM high school. It's for girls only. Girls only, the first of its kind probably in Africa. School built okay. from scratch just for girls to focus on STEM. So is this a boarding school? Yes, a boarding school. They are focused on engineering, biomedical sciences, computer engineering, computer science, and, and it has, um, it opened uh, this year. And this one of the Kufuado, uh, President the Kufuado. And this is a Muslim tree. This in is a tree. Happens to be my constituency. Yeah. And this is a smaller oh. version what are they excited the about in this school. photograph? Oh, you see, and they are getting at the attention of the world. Mm -hmm. Different people are coming from all over the world to visit them. So this was a delegation from Belgium that went there and gave them robotic kits and did a workshop for them. And this is uh, what was going on at the time. They were super excited. Oh, I see. This is their library. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new normal in Ghana. That no school opens without a library being built for. So we don't want to open schools where you don't have library. You call it a high school. So libraries have been built for all the new schools. By the way, including the Aflao Community Senior High School, which has now been completed. Oh, we, no, wait. Let's talk about Aflao. This yeah. is the one that the president appeared on yes, TCFM. Yes, It's all completed. The Aflao one, the one oh, the yes. president jokingly said that yes. oh, he needs to go and complete yeah, it himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have photographs of it? Oh, yes. Can we see uh, can you the Aflao one? They community the Senior High School. So that's a community senior high school? Yes. For the Aflao community. Aflao so it's community. new. Is that yeah. it? You see, this, look that's at the science lab. Yes, yes, yes. Three science labs completed by Nana Dedanko Kufad for that school. It's all done. Oh, I see. Uh, so, so it's already open? Yes. Uh, but the Ohini was complaining that they have not completed. Is oh, that, no, no. that students there? Um, yes. They are Is there a mixed school? Yes. Day school? Day school with science lab for E block. Library is done. Science labs are done. Everything is there waiting for the president to go and commission it. So uh, children in the JSS in the neighborhood, they mm. will be able to attend the school? Not yet. Mm -hmm. But I think there has to be a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. You see, Ghana happens to be, as of now, my research is telling me, the only country with three-year secondary education system. We need more? No, uh, three years secondary education in other countries, the minimum of six years. Oh, six years, yeah. Why? Is it, isn't it six years? It's JSS mm, three, no, no, JSS no. one, two, three, but SSS one, two, three, six years. No, under the pre tertiary Education Act, mm -hmm. we define education in Ghana as two years KG, mm -hmm. six years primary, mm -hmm. three year junior high school, which is part of basic, <laughs> and then three years secondary. That is why your junior high schools are, our junior high still in run down old middle school building because we don't deem it as secondary. Even though we call them junior high, there's nothing high school about them. And now the president has empowered me to begin to take a look at how do we transform the weak middle of our education system. The weakest link in the Ghanaian education system is the junior high school. Since 1987, the poor has been woefully disadvantaged because they are boxed into schools uh, that we call junior high school, and there's nothing high school about it. You don't have computer lab, you don't have science labs, you don't have libraries, and we still call it junior high school. And the law now says they are not part of the secondary education regime. It has to change. Okay, let me try and understand what you're saying graphically. Uh -huh. So I went to Garrison Primary School in Belmarkham. Yes. At that time, there was no GSS. We ended yes. at Class 6. Yes. And I went off to Presec. Yes. Full secondary. Seven years. Seven years. Of okay. Presec education. Yes. But now, mm. with the GSS, when mm. I went back to the school, when GSS mm. started, mm -hmm. after, so, so we had a, 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 a block. Mm -hmm. Class 1, 2, 3 is up, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm. and then mm. teachers' offices and all that. Mm. Next to, the, to that, which was a place we played football, they built... A junior high school. JSS 1, 2, 3. And they wear the same uniform with Class 6. Is yes. that the point you're making? The so point? the psychological effect we got from departing Garrison in Class 6 and, and becoming an old student years. of Garrison, and I'm in Presec Form 1, is, is gone, right? It's gone. So, so, so they are so still thinking actually, they are primary. No, they are not just thinking they are primary. They are truly treated as primary. Because the law says you are part of basic. That is why that junior high school there doesn't have science labs, doesn't have No, it's, it's only uh, rooms they built. That Three rooms it. for Three Jesus, rooms. one that Jesus, two Jesus. And the students are in there and teachers are going And it was there. the same teachers, kind of. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So look at what Nigeria has done. Mm -hmm. Their junior high school are part of the senior high school, same campus, co-location. 
taught by graduate teachers, using the same science lab and libraries at the high schools. Consequently, we sit for the WASI, and they do better than us because they have six years secondary. So if your child happens to be at, at Ghana International School, GIS, uh, from the primary six, they go to secondary, begin biology, chemistry, and fixes, right? Mm -hmm. Triple dose of science. Mm -hmm. The other friend with who- With science labs and all yes, of that. Yes, the other friend who happens to go to the public junior high school mm -hmm. is doing integrated science, a single dose of science, 21st century, fourth industrial revolution. You can't talk about STEM, you can't talk about transformation of our fortunes if we don't transform junior secondary. So, so what is the country. plan? So, in, so uh, let's take a community like Burma Camp or a community like mm -hmm. Laboni or a community like Quadaso. Mm -hmm. What's the plan? How are you going to I get see this the, the, the plan is this. Um, first of all, we have to remove the legal barrier because we can still strengthen mm -hmm. junior high schools without changing the law. But if you don't change the law, the sense of urgency is not there mm -hmm. because you are still going to treat these three years which should be part of high school as basic. Mm -hmm. So that sense of agency is not there. There are two options that we can have. The option of ensuring that new senior high schools... So, so this, is, this video we are watching, this is where? This is Abomusu. So this is what? Abomusu. This high is a senior high school. Okay. At Abomusu. Community senior high school? No, this is a full boarding senior high school, oh, uh, which is serving, uh, going to serve students from across the country. And this is Nana Dudanko Kufuado, Free secondary education. Uh, this is um, the, one of the best in the hey, world. In it looks fact, interesting. The, you, I, 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 I never saw any high school like this in America. This school is it's better a than school. high school. And it's new, Abomosu Secondary School. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Abomosu Secondary Abomosu. School. Abomosu. Who's STEM. this? STEM High School. Uh, that happens to be, uh, I think, Municipal Director of Education. And these are the classrooms. Uh, these schools are better. Uh, built and configured and uh, well structured than most senior high schools around the world. In fact, oh, this is interesting. You don't have these high schools in Singapore, and we but, have them in Ghana. But how but, many? But how many are you going to get? How many of this? There are nine of this, and the Busuncho, nine of this are coming. Oh, that's person. the boarding house. That's the bathroom for yeah, the boarding bathrooms, house. Bathrooms, everything. And you see, the good news is that. Why are you making a boarding, by the way? This is the, what dormitory with the beds. The, the, the beds are there. Yes. Yeah. So now everything is ready, and and you, you know. Uh, one of the beautiful things is that this school has 12 science labs. This school has more science labs than Presec. 12? Yes. But if you don't operate this school like Presec, right, uh -huh. after 20 years, it will never come close to Presec. So what are we doing now? What we are doing now is that we are doing school affiliation, as you mentioned earlier. In fact, this school is affiliated with Presec. Uh -huh. The headmaster there now was assistant headmaster at Presec. So you are taking the assistant headmaster from Bissek to go and be headmaster that, at Abomosu. At Abomosu. To bring the Odadia culture. That is it. Because mm -hmm. the, the point of the matter is this. If you do not intentionally build the Odadia culture in this school, this school will never become Oda, like Odadia, even though it has better facilities than Odadia. That's true. So the leadership element has to be strengthened. Bring all the best practices at Bissek. Even though this is not a mission school, it doesn't hurt if the Presbyterians gives you a chaplain mm -hmm. at this school. Mm -hmm. So everything that makes Presec tech, put them here. And when you're able to do that, in about five to 10 years, you're going to get another Presec. So you are no longer going to depend on the 54 schools uh, to meet the needs of the best and brightest in this nation. You have to make a conscious effort to make, uh, ensure that all the new schools are affiliated. We have one school coming at Akrodi in Ahafo. You are affiliated with St. James. Mm -hmm. St. James is one of the top performing schools in this country. In no time, it will become like St. James. So you're putting the pressure on the 54, you're reducing the pressure on the 54 schools. You are duplicating the 54 schools. Yes, yes, are the 54 schools. And then you begin to look at the existing schools that are struggling. Mm -hmm. Won't affiliation work? Aguna Nyakrum Senior High School is one of the top schools in the country now. You know why? No. It's an obscure school, but they got an assistant headmistress from Wesley Girls, who happened to be uh, as, uh, as a, a, a deputy, brought that assistant headmistress to uh, uh, Agrania Krum, and now it's one of the best schools in the country. So the thing is that is, oh, yes. human beings matter. Matter, leadership matter. Manfi Methodist girl did not just become Manfi Methodist girl. It took intervention of somebody from a high-performing school who go there, went there, brought leadership into focus, 
and he became and fermented these girls. So if you make, don't make a concerted effort in seeding new schools with the DNA of existing high-performing schools, you will put up this school. It's one of the best in the world, but the outcomes is not going to be one of the best in the world. You know, there are 48 high schools in Ghana, as I speak with you, um, that are going through transformation. Mm -hmm. And they, um, uh, they are getting support from MasterCard Foundation. Oh, that's and, interesting. And, and before the transformation began, uh, those 48 schools, if your child goes there, you have a 1% or less chance of going to the university. Wow. Those schools have 1% pass rate or less. Wow. Some have 0% pass rate. If you don't make a conscious effort of transforming these schools, you are not going to get the outcome that we need for education to play its rightful role as the most important socioeconomic transformation agent. So bottom line is that at this Ministry of Education, uh, with the full support of the President, we are making secondary education better. And we are actually moving, working backwards to say junior high school should be strengthened so that it can have a true quality six-year secondary education to put Ghana's education on the map, make us competitive like the rest of the world, if not better than, than Vietnam and other nations that are emerging. So yes, access has been improved, no doubt. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to increase the enrollment uh, in senior high schools. Uh, from 800,000 that we inherited to now 1.3 million. So it's huge improvement in access. But we are now looking at quality. And then from quality, you look at the relevance of the education. That is where STEM comes in. And that is where STEAM comes in. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. The Quadraso uh, uh, STEAM High School. The Quadraso creative, creative Arts. They have buildings like this, but this is still Abomosu. And the okay. Quadraso school, they have similar facilities. It's Quadraso a, is, a, is a secondary creative school. Creative arts, yes. Yeah, but I'm, why are you doing creative arts at secondary level? Mm. If you go to Los the, Angeles. The School of Performing Arts at the University of Ghana is, is at the university yeah, level. Yeah, you go to um, Los Angeles. Is that Quadraso under construction? Yes. Okay. You go to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You have a school for the arts. At the secondary level? At the secondary level. Students audition to get in there. They become the movie actors of the world because of the early. Uh, so you are going uh, to be auditioning yeah. GSS uh, graduates. To get in here. To get to Abomosu SSC. No, to get uh, to Quadraso. To Quadraso SSC to yes. do creative, creative arts, arts at Film. SSC level. Oh, yeah, films. You see, the point You're of, going to have studios there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of the line studios. You see, the interesting we do accounting in high school, right? Yes. So why can't we do a film in high school? Why are we not doing engineering yeah. in high school? In England, they do law in high school. Oh, yes. I taught law in high school in Los Angeles. Yeah, For one year, I taught law. Yeah. And it's also exciting. Here, you only get aspects of law if you do management. Management ha had a component mm -hmm. of law. But the bottom line is that if you look at the creative arts high school and the fact that you are going to expose the children at a younger age to the creative arts, you know the 10,000-hour rule, which says that mm -hmm. if you focus on something okay. and do it from an early, early For 10, age, 10,000 hours. hours, you become an expert in it. People may call you a genius, but it's because you've put in you've so it for, much for the same effort. time. So, so, and also, the good news is that you're going to get children who are truly interested in the industry going to the school. Mm -hmm. And consequently, it's not going to be an afterthought that I applied to go to school of administration. I didn't get accepted, and they gave me the school of performing arts, and I went. Yeah, because you are coming to performing arts because you were in Quadraso. So that's your focus. That's your focus. And no, no matter how many A's you get, that's where you want to go. That's where you want to go. Very but interesting. Then, but the interesting thing is that you can also decide to go and pursue medicine because that school also has 12 labs. And oh, they're quite as Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't want a situation where the best and brightest man decide not to pursue creative arts because they want to be doctors. You see, the best engineers in the world are the ones who can play music. Yes. So you can still go here and decide not to pursue creative arts and be able, by virtue of the courses that you've taken, be able to pursue a course in engineering, medicine, or any other field. But you'll be solid with your foundation, a well-rounded, educated individual, because of your exposure to the arts and exposure to the sciences at the same time. And that is the new philosophy, that you can skill high school students, and in fact, 
do students from here can secure a job in the movie industry? And the movie well, industry sometimes yeah. pays more than doctors. Of course. By I mean, far. Na, na, you know, I was telling a, a couple of friends of mine that in Ghana, when we went to school, we only taught three professions. Mm. Lawyer, uh -huh. doctor, mm. engineer. That is it. Later on, we added architect. Yes. So if you cannot be doctor, you cannot be lawyer, you cannot be engineer, you are dumb. And, that, and, that's yeah. how we grew up. So it limits our employment opportunities. And then we spend our time watching Nigerian movies and we spend our money watching Nigerian movies. That money doesn't come to Ghanaians. It and goes it, to Nigeria because they have built an industry. It, it, and in Legon, we laugh at them at theaters. We call them dondology. Because people do not aspire to be there. Very few people aspire to be Clever there. Clever people don't aspire to be no, there no, because they, they are told, go and do medicine. That is it. But in terms of even driving government policy, theater mm. is far more important than medicine. And, it's far and, more important and, and, than law. And you know, one interesting thing is that now with Netflix and all these things, yes. you can produce a movie here to be watched around, around the world. Around the world. And the money will come to Ghana. Yeah. And also, the reason why we really want to make sure the sciences is integrated into this is the idea of sci-fi movies, mm -hmm. science-based movies. Okay, that so this, in this part of school, you're going to have the science as well, oh, then yeah, yeah. sound engineers. Oh, yeah, sound engineers will be there. At SSS level. At SSS level. This is a watershed moment for this nation, and another Dan Kwakufuado is making a serious down payment on how you build a strong, uh, serious creative art industry with the requisite skill set coming through the secondary education system. And once and for all, put the creative art in a space. That is very different. And in fact, the art curriculum will be written by, it's being written by NAFTI. There's a committee in place, NAFTI professors and, and other performing art schools. The whole idea is that Students who go here will be exposed to advanced courses. And with the arrangement we are making, we are creating what we call accelerated pathway. What it means is simply, if you're able to take certain courses here, you may be able to finish your degree in three years. Oh, I when see. When you go to NAFTI. So when you come out of the quarter, so when you go to Legon Performing Arts, instead of four years, you may be able to do three years. Three years. But we are working with the universities for them to determine the proficiency in the courses. So after high school, you take that exams, mm -hmm. the proficiency exams, mm -hmm. and if you are good in the courses that you have to do at level 100 and some limited level 200, you can skip then, it. then the university skips it for you. You see, the Shouldn't American system... Shouldn't have one for football? You, you see, the thing is this. senior high for football. Sports high school should be happening. Yes. Because it's a lot of opportunity. But we grow football talent. It's a, it's a lot of opportunity. If we have 20 players in Champions League quarterfinal, and each of them is earning 200,000 pounds a week, and, and those, they are repatriating some of the money to Ghana. That's, that immediately solves our CD problem. And, and those who don't even go through the professional route, mm -hmm. universities around the world will come and grab them yes. and give them full scholarship. Give them so scholarship. I've been discussing it with the Minister for Youth and Sports. We want to do it. I believe and and that we can populate the European teams in the next yes. 20 years with 30 Ghanaian players. Real Madrid and, and, has seven, yeah. Manchester United has six. And because we've, we've trained them well. We start them from junior high school. You, you get and you go to a senior high board in which is sports dedicated. Sports dedicated. And you bring people from Europe who are sports people to come and teach them. Come and teach them. And you change. Because you are scaling high school students to get opportunities that they would never uh, have gotten if they haven't gone through those. So with creative arts, with sports, scaling high school, creating opportunity, that is what makes the country's secondary education system relevant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you do assess... You have to do quality, but don't forget about relevance of the education So you system. think now we have crossed access? We have yes. granted access? Oh, yes, we've granted. With SHS. Yeah, but we have to seriously look at quality. So we are now doing quality. Quality and, and relevance. then relevance at the same time. Relevance for global relevance. Global and national relevance. Hmm. Because you, 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 you have a situation where engineers secure jobs faster, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't create a pipeline of engineers, then your education system is not relevant to the needs of your country. Yeah. It, there's something interesting happening at the National Service where companies are requesting for National Service personnel to be placed in their organizations. Mm -hmm. And they are not finding the people. They need more engineers, they need more mathematicians, and they are not finding them. I see. But the interesting thing is that schools are churning out graduates in fields that the nation doesn't need. So then the question becomes, you want to have more STEM-related professionals, but the STEM-related professionals are not in the pipeline coming from high school. How do you